All right, guys. Um, my name is Katie Bochelle. I come from the great state of North Carolina. I live uh, just outside of Charlotte in Mooresville. Um, so if I drop a y'all or a fix into, I apologize. My southern twang comes out a little bit when I get nervous. So bear with me. Um, in all seriousness, I'm super excited to be here with you guys today. Um, I'm going to be talking, sorry, I got distracted. I'm going to be talking about search and e-commerce journeys. So kind of what it takes to have an e-commerce platform and, you know, what search is involved to make that better for your customers. Um, I previously worked for a Fortune 40 company and uh, took them through an entire digital transformation, replacing their search and navigation engine on multiple platforms and multiple sites. Um, today, I'm lucky enough to work for Lucidworks and be one of their key e-commerce platform specialists, um, helping other companies that we work with do the same and lead them through evolving trends and what's next in search. So my agenda today, um, enough about me, so let's talk about that. Um, today, customers are expecting flawless transitions, whether it is on-site, in-store, on mobile. And as search professionals, we are the ones who have to deliver that flawless transaction. In order to deliver those experiences, we must be impeccable with the search result sets that we produce. Um, let's walk through the evolving trends that retailers are providing to their customers through search. We'll deep dive into using a rich autocomplete um, to engage shoppers, enhance faceted search, and product recommendations. So on an average, conversion rates are 60% higher when you use the search bar. In 2019, there will be approximately 236.4 million individual search users. And customers who receive no results are three times more likely to leave your site and never return. Those are some staggering, staggering numbers. Um, so how do we engage users in the search bar? Capitalize on the mass numbers of people that are gonna be coming to your site and using search and reduce the risk for null search results, which is everybody's worst fear on a search e-commerce site. Let's dive right into autocomplete, also known as search type ahead or predictive. So 82% of the top e-commerce sites um, offer autocomplete suggestions, which significantly enhance a user's search experience, whether on desktop or mobile. This feature completes a word in the search bar as you type and provide search keywords and or product suggestions based on the search term that's being typed. While the obvious benefit of search autocomplete is it speeds up the process, it also leads your customers to better search results overall. So when your autocomplete mechanism works well, it helps your users save time, it iterates their search queries better, and it finds the results they're looking for faster. So one of our biggest challenges in e-commerce is faster, 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 faster. And autocomplete is one of those benefits that can get your customers to products faster. It can also help customers avoid spelling mistakes, um, spelling errors by naturally detecting um, these errors and correcting them as the customer is typing. This will ensure that your customers get to the products they are looking for, regardless of having misspelled words in their transaction. Autocomplete doesn't only show so suggested queries, it also shows related products. Um, it allows your customers to go right from typing their query into the search bar and land on a PDP and completes that transaction faster. So sometimes by using your autocomplete in a way that you're showing the product suggestions, you're taking the customer from search directly to an add the cart situation. So higher conversion rates based on that. And if your customers would rather search the term instead of looking at the product, they've got that option too. So you've got a lot of retailers that go back and forth between do we add product suggestions? Do we not add product suggestions? It's a nice little way, <clears throat> excuse me, to skip that step. If somebody knows exactly what they're looking for and the product shows up in the autocomplete, they can click right on the product and go straight to an add the cart situation. So just to give you guys an example, 
um, of the autocomplete function, I went to Macy's.com and searched for red midi dress. So for the guys in the audience who, there's a lot of you, who don't know what a what red midi dress is, it's a dress that the hem is just below the knees. Perfect for women who are looking for work dresses, anything like that. So it's a very common fashion trend, a very common search term in fashion. As you can tell from the very first term that I've typed into the search bar, red, the autocomplete starts to suggest the terms and products that I might be looking for. Again, with red midi, and finally, with red midi dress. And you can see how it adjusts per term as I'm looking for the products. You can quickly see how beneficial a strong autocomplete would be to your customers. Moving on to faceted search, also known as left-hand navigation. Um, surprisingly, only 40% of websites use faceted search despite it being essential to e-commerce. When users see how many options there are with no way to narrow choices, your exit rate skyrockets. People don't have a way, if they search something ambiguous, to kind of filter down for what they might be looking for. For those who aren't sure what they want, it outlines some of the attributes they might be interested in. And for those who do, it narrows by what's important. Faceted search is a truly valuable feature of on-site search that can help simplify and streamline your customer's journey from search to purchase and create a frictionless shopping experience. All right, let's take a look at faceted search. So my example here is from REI and workout clothes. So by using the faceted search or left-handed navigation, I filtered on women's or gender equals women's, size equals medium, and category equals fitness. So if you guys haven't figured out from watching my examples, I was shopping the whole time I was building this thing. Don't tell my husband, <laughs> it didn't work out well for him. Um, but you can see quickly how my search result set goes from 2,187 products. And then be, by, able, um, by being able to use the filters on the left-hand side, I dropped down to 215. And this then becomes a much more manageable search result set for your customer to navigate and find what they're looking for, especially when you have <clears throat> ambiguous terms such as workout clothes. Am I looking for capris? Am I looking for a tank top? I'm not quite sure what I'm looking for. So using that left-hand navigation gives your shopper an option they didn't know they had. Um, same goes for if you have like a home improvement store or a parts store, you know, you could say I'm searching for appliances. Well, what kind of appliances are you looking for? Your customers um, would be able to use that left hand navigation to make that a cleaner experience for them. And finally, let's dive into recommendations, which is the bread and butter of increasing AOV. So your average order value or your ticket price. The importance of effective <clears throat> product recommendations cannot be ignored. When done properly, they can heavily add to the contribute or the success of the website. <clears throat> Studies of personalization have revealed that when recommendations are made intelligently, those products being recommended can enjoy conversion rates of 90% higher than your normal conversion rates on the site. So depending on your company's strategy, you can use signals to drive product recommendations based on similar products, best-selling products, or products that other customers have previously viewed. So let's take a look at my final example today. I went to staples.com and searched for index cards. And lo and behold, um, if anybody in this room knows me, I'm a little extra. Um, I picked the multicolored ones. Those are my favorites. And then I got this awesome suggestion to get some multicolored pens to go with it. Well, wouldn't you know that two days before I found this example on the website, I was in Staples and I bought them without even having the suggestion. So. <laughs> Staples is making some really good recommendations based on the products they're showing. But it's stuff like this that can drive, I was already going to get the index cards, drive your AOV higher because the middle of the page, I've got these new pens. Well, of course I need new pens. 
And so I added them to my cart as well. So it's just a prime example of how your recommenders can kind of up that AOV <clears throat> and give you the higher ticket item on the website. So in closing, e-commerce retailers have many ways to use search to their advantage. Um, Autocomplete being the first interaction that your customers even have with the search bar. Faceted search, giving your customers the ability to narrow their search results. And finally, recommendations, the ability for retailers to upsell to their customers. I just wanted to open the floor for any Q&A about e-commerce and how search can help you. If anybody had any questions. I don't need that, I can talk about me. Um, Is there a major difference between where we were talking about left-hand left map between the US and other regions of the world? Do we know? I personally don't know. Um, I honestly have a couple clients that are multilingual, multilingual sites <clears throat> and have different sites for each country and they're utilizing it the same way. But I only have one or two clients that are like that. Um, yeah, yeah. But I think um, on there, at least the two customers I do have, they are utilizing navigation, left navigation. <clears throat> I have actually seen a lot of US websites without the left hand navigation. So um, it, it was kind of staggering for me just to understand um, how an e commerce website would survive without left hand navigation, <clears throat> especially since you can use it via navigation or search, and it comes in handy on both sides. <coughs> I can talk pretty loudly too. Um, yeah, no, that's fine. Thank you. Um, in the auto suggestions, have you seen any difference when thumbnails are provided or imagery is provided in the suggestions versus perhaps offering using that real real estate to show more options? Yeah. So we actually did um, in my previous company some A/B testing, where we went back and forth by like also adding like non-product content and how tos and. <clears throat> I apologize, I don't know my throat's getting sore all of a sudden. <clears throat> and one of the things that we noticed is when you had the product suggestions, so we did, you know, the um, search query suggestions and then we had our product suggestions at the bottom. <clears throat> and when you add the search query suggestions and people actually click to that PDP from there, there's a higher percentage of add to cart. So <clears throat> where they have to go to the query and they're still kind of browsing for what they're looking for, if they do click on that product suggestion from the autocomplete, there's a higher conversion and a higher add to cart rate from that autocomplete suggestion. Yeah. So, uh, so the question is, Yeah, sure. So we uh, recently added the faceted search. Yeah. I'm talking about search and not like navigation, right? Uh, and we see actually a very low usage for that. So I was wondering, you know, you put it like on top three things. Yeah. So what, you know, um, how can you explain that? I mean, so we were Do like. Do you have, for your industry, is there a lot of ambiguity in the search terms that people are searching or is what they're searching for very specific? Very specific. Usually it's very specific, yeah. but not always, right? Maybe, maybe that's the case, but it's not. Without knowing your full history, that, that would be where my head went first. Mm -hmm. Somebody who has a more option for more ambiguous terms, um, you know, again, a home improvement store that says, I'm going to look for appliances, I'm going to look for a lawnmower, you're going to have the fact that search come more handy because they kind of have an idea of what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. But if you have a department where they're searching specifically on a part number and they know what they're going to, but then know directly what they're looking for, you might not see that. Actually, even on um, searches that are not for specific things, like let's say the laptop, we see a bigger percent of customers who navigate who use the filters than in search and uh, by a large margin, yeah. which is very... Uh, it's weird. Yeah, that's very interesting. I'd love to dive in it with you guys a little bit more. Have you seen a mix where they have, no, okay. <laughs> where they, they have a mix where they're basically showing content along with product from the artist? 
Yeah, and when you say content, are you talking like non-product content and kind of like in the like maybe like a do-it-yourself world where you're going to have? Um, I've, I've seen a mix of both. I've done a lot of A/B testing um, in my previous company with that, where we didn't see a lot of benefit in having the non-product content kind of co-mingled with our products <clears throat> in search terms. Um, but I have seen other websites that will kind of intermingle the, you know, how to build a fence, how to paint a room, you know, and then once you get to that how-to, you have your options for products. Once you did that, you can test it was it was lower. Um, it didn't show a significant increase like we thought it was going to. Um, and I think it was just because you had a lot of the do-it-yourselfers who knew what they were looking for. Um, and if they were looking for how to, they specifically asked for how to build a fence, how to paint a room. You have a question. Oh, sorry. So mine was actually on I too. One was on the how to content. But were you tracking kind of time on site and other metrics besides conversion with your how to content? Because I think you know store visits is now a metric that probably wasn't a metric that was tracked at that point. Yeah, I we did not have a lot of metrics. We had a lot of heavy metrics around our um, anything that you clicked on, anything that you searched for, time on the site. But when it came to how to, our how to was indexed in a separate pipeline, so it was completely. It was ingested separately. Gotcha. Um, so we didn't have a lot of metrics on how to content and how to use. Okay. Um, my other question was on when you were talking about left nav. So if you're doing a very vague search, so we're in auto parts, if someone searches brakes, yeah. I don't really know what you mean. Um, so we've created some marketing pages that kind of help guide that journey. Yeah. We can do it both ways though, because we have left nav. So you can do that. You can click on brake pads or rotors or whatever it so is. It has like a landing. So what's your take on a landing page versus letting them do it themselves? For something super ambiguous, um, it, it's it's kind of hit or miss. I prefer the landing pages because, it's again, if a customer searches brakes or they search appliances, they don't really know what they're looking for. They're kind of browsing. So it's better for them to give, you know, for me to give them kind of a push in the right direction experience. And, you know, when um, I was at my previous company, we actually built out these beautifully laid out pages and kind of guide them and give them options on where they wanted to go. And then from there, we could send them to a list page based on what they clicked on. But we definitely use those landing pages for some of those ambiguous terms. Perfect. Thanks. Two more minutes. So this is going to be a little open-ended. No, sure. <laughs> this will be a little open-ended, but um, can you speak a little bit to the B2B uh, website experience and how you know the factors of having a more intentioned buyer instead of someone who's more shopping how that impacts you know maybe the the importance of any of the particular uh, topics that you discussed there yeah so uh, it's funny my husband is probably now a search expert because I have been in search for so long um, and I have always been in the BC but he actually works in a business where he buys from B2B sites. <laughs> and uh, so he is he has a couple takes on that. And um, he he says, you know, when he goes to those sites, he is actually he knows what he's looking for. He is one of the ones that's gonna type in the very specific search terms and typically take it right to two or three products, if not the exact product he's looking for. Um, so on the B2, B2B sites, um, without me having a lot of experience working with them because I've done more for the C and e commerce. Um, a lot of your clients, and I would love to see some of your search, search terms one day, um, but I bet a lot of your clients are specifically looking for part numbers or exactly, you know exactly what they're looking for. So some of this stuff might not benefit the B2B as much, or yeah, B2B as much as it benefits the B2B. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, I will leave my business cards at the back, but I would love to chit chat with some of you guys some more if you don't have time. So. Thank you.